five. I'm going to go as if we're live. So first of all, let me say hello, everybody, and welcome to our live chat. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for all of your questions, all of your comments. We've had such a huge response to this uh, live chat. And uh, so, you know, I'm excited about that. But before we go into your questions, which I know I promised to do, and I, and I will do, and if you see a shadow moving about, that's my puppy, Kachuro. Um, so before we go into anything else, I'd like to talk about the Orlando tragedy. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who joined me yesterday for our healing minute, uh, sending healing and love to all of those people in Orlando who have been affected by this awful, awful tragedy. And uh, our hearts go out to everyone. And, um, you know, it's, it's such an awful thing when something like this happens. And it brings home to us just uh, what kind of a world we're living in today. Uh, never quite knowing, never quite being able to trust that, you know, if we if we go out in, into a shopping mall or if we go out for dinner somewhere, we, we never quite know anymore what, you know, what the result of our actions is going to be through no fault of our own. Which is why it's so important, I think, for us to begin to realize how important it is for us to value every day and to make the most of every day. Because even if, it's not through a tragedy, even if it's simply a, a matter of health or simply, you know, we never know when our time is coming. And we know this, we all know this, it's a fact. But when a tragedy like this happens, it brings it home to us how the reality of how fragile we are and, uh, and how life is so tenuous and, and it can end at any moment to end in a violent way as happened in Orlando is the worst I think one of the worst ways because you know violence is it's dying through violence it's so sudden it's so quick and it's so easy for us to point the finger uh, and uh, you know want to punish those who are responsible, which we can't always do. So many of you have written in to me saying, you know, what do we do now? Uh, I've had people saying, how can we trust anymore? How can we have faith anymore? Is there really a God who can let this happen? I've talked a lot over the years about how it, it is so easy for us to say, yes, we have faith. Yes, I believe in God. You, you get into a, a group of people. There might be 20 people. There might be 2,000 people or even 5,000 people. And you ask the question, do you believe in God? And I'm going to say a good 80 to 90% of people will put their hands up at least that many. Yes, do you have faith in God? And people will say yes. It's so easy to say, yes, we have faith, but it's very, very hard for us to live our faith. Living our faith is the toughest. And when a tragedy like this happens, actually living our faith, actually being able to say, you know, this is God's will, and God knows what he's doing, being able to say those things is not so easy anymore. Having said that, as terrible as this tragedy is, I do believe that none of us can go before our time. And it's God who decides that time. So, as awful as this may sound, especially to those of you who are suffering and grieving, I do believe that all of these people who have died in this awful, awful way, I do believe that they're with their angels. I do believe that God decided that he wanted these beautiful people, these beautiful souls to come to him, that it was their time. 
And so my prayers are for all of those of you who are left behind, who are still reeling from this and reeling from this awful tragedy. But yet my heart soars with joy for all of those who are with God now, who are with their angels and who have gone home. I hope saying that not to offend anyone because that is not my intention. But if I believe in God, which I do, and if I believe in the energy and the power of the universe, which I do, living my faith is the only way forward for me and hopefully for all of you. So as awful as this is, I would ask if you wouldn't mind to join me every day, not just for the people who passed in Orlando, not just for the people who were left behind after this terrible tragedy, but <coughs> excuse me, but to join with me every day at 10 o'clock in the morning, wherever you are in the world, 10 o'clock is fine, just to spend one minute sending out your love, your energy, your healing energy to all of those in the world who are suffering, to all of those in the world who have had their tragedies, no matter how small or large they are. And if you can join with me at 10 o'clock, we call it the Healing Minute. And people all around the world know about the Healing Minute. If you can join with me and give that one minute of your time every day, you build up the power and the energy. And the more of us that do it, and the more of us around the world who join together to do this, the more powerful that prayer becomes, the more powerful that healing becomes. It's been proved that prayer works. It's been proved that, you know, the power of prayer is the most amazing thing. When you join me, and I hope you'll join me in that healing minute, please remember, we're not asking, please God, save these people. We're not asking, please God, you know, whatever. Whatever we want is immaterial. What we're asking for, if God wills, is to bring peace and love and harmony to all of those in the world who are suffering. And we're asking, dear God, I will to thy will. It's about living your faith. If you're living your faith, then you're believing and having faith that God's will, God knows what he's doing. God's will is the most important thing, not ours. So again, my blessings and my love my healing energy go out to all of those in Orlando who were affected by this. But I want to say, having said that, I do believe, and I hope you'll find it in your hearts at some point to believe, that they are with God, that they are with their angels. They are home. All right. Uh, now I promised some questions. <coughs> Excuse me, you'll have to excuse me when I cough and choke a bit. I'm still recovering from uh, whatever it was my darling grandson gave to me. So um, I'm a bit, uh, you know, I'm a bit throaty and a bit chesty still after three weeks. Um, but uh, living with it and getting over it slowly. So um, I, have, uh, I have here my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who's always with me. He's going to be helping me with some of your questions. <clears throat> I also have my uh, little boy, Kachoro, uh, who's my puppy, and he's sort of just sort of hanging out here. Uh, and today joining me and helping me, because it's hard for me to talk without coughing and spluttering, is my assistant, Carolyn, who's sitting to my right. And um, so what we're going to do today is she is going to read out some of your questions and then I'm going to attempt to answer them. So Carolyn, um, how are we doing here? 
what is our first question? Great. Our first question is from Chris from Burlington, and she asks, Please tell us the best way to handle situations when people with non-loving intentions are hurting so many. Well, we chose that question because it's relevant to what is happening, what has happened uh, over the last few days. How do we deal with it? Ooh, it you know, it's so easy for me to, to say to you, well, we first of all, we have to forgive, and, uh, and then we have to love our enemy because this is what the Bible teaches us, this is what our faith teaches us. But boy, that's a huge, huge ask. Um, I think rather than forgiving, I think the only way for us to go forward, those of us who are suffering and, and, um, uh, and who are in pain due to someone else's actions, and, and due to someone else's violent actions, I think the way forward is to hold on as tightly as you can to your faith, as hard as it is. Um, just keep telling yourself, this is God's will, and um, somehow I'm, I'm going to find the strength to, to deal with this. It's natural for people to feel anger, and I, I get it, because you know when I first heard of it, of course, the first thing you, you you do is you're angry. You're angry with those people who, for whatever their reasons, you know, there can be a thousand reasons why somebody does a bad thing, but a thousand reasons don't make for one good excuse. So there is no excusing these people. Forgiveness is tough because I personally believe that it's not so important that you forgive, it's much more important that you accept. And in this instance, and in many incidences, I don't think it's possible for us as human beings to be able to fully forgive because in order for, to forgive, I think you've got to know the entire story. And you, you have to know the entire story of these people who, who do these awful things. Um, and I don't want to know the entire story. I don't want to know the personal issues. I don't want to hear the thousands of reasons why somebody did an awful thing. I don't want to hear that they were abused as children. I don't want to hear any of those excuses that people try, try to give for doing bad things. It's not important to me. I don't want to hear it. What is important to me is that, that they did it. And what is important to me is how am I going to deal with this situation now? How we deal with the situation is the most important thing. I, I don't know what to tell you if you if you are suffering. I don't I can't say to you you know, you need to accept, you need to forgive, you need to, you need to move on with your life. We all know those things. But doing it on a daily basis, even minute by minute, and those people who are suffering right now are trying to get through the day minute by minute by minute. Um, I don't have any advice except try if you can, as hard as it is, to hold on to your faith because it's your faith that will be your ladder that you will be able to climb up and to climb out of the despair that you're in the pain never goes away the grief never goes away don't expect it to don't be too hard on yourself just minute by minute, moment by moment, hang on to your faith and allow that faith to be a ladder for you to climb up so that at some point you can climb into the light, you can climb into the daylight, you can climb into the fresh air, you can climb enough to breathe a little bit. And after you've learned to breathe a little bit, hold on to your faith and climb the ladder and keep moving up Keep moving and moving, allow your faith to propel you forward, to keep climbing until you reach a place where you can breathe more easily, 
where you can cry more easily, where you can grieve more easily without the pain killing you inside. Hold on to your faith. Okay, what's the next question? Robin from Vermont <clears throat> asks, when one person hurts another, do they face consequences when they pass to the other side? Oh boy, well, especially at this moment, we all want to think, don't we, that whoever did these awful things is going to suffer, boy oh boy, yes, because it's human. We want people to <laughs> suffer for their misdeeds. Um, especially when the, the misdeeds have such dire consequences. But I've learned, that, and I don't believe that God wields an axe and wields retribution. I think that when we, when we pass, we, all of us, even those who do evil things, we have an opportunity to step into the light now, those who are truly evil don't want to <laughs> because they're not interested in the light. They only are interested in going to the dark and going into those dark places. But those of us who are not entirely evil, those who do bad things but who are not entirely evil, and those people who actually do bad things in the name of God, they do want to go into the light but when you go into the light and when you stand in the light this is what happens when you stand in the light the light shows you everything it shows you everything about yourself it shows you everything about all of the bad stuff that you did all of the good all of the bad even those of us who for instance myself let's do this i don't think i'm an evil person I don't think I'm a bad person I think I'm a good person striving to be a good person but I do from time to time do bad things and I do from time to time say things that are hurtful to other people I know when it's my time and I'm standing in the light I'm going to be cringing I know it because there are throughout my life so many things that I've said and done which have been hurtful to other people no matter how I've strived to be a good person, I know I've messed up. I know I have. And I know that when I stand in the light, I'm going to see all those things and hear all of those things that I did. But more importantly, I'm going to see the results and the effects that I've had on other people. And for those people that I've hurt, whether deliberately or otherwise, for those people that I've hurt, I'm going to see the results of my actions. I'm going to be shown. I'm going to be mortified. I know that I'm going to be mortified. And that's going to be my punishment. But I don't think I've ever done anything truly evil. So imagine someone who does something truly evil in the name of a God that they worship. And they get into the light and they see the devastation and the ruination that they have caused to other people, which in no way is a godly thing, which in no way is a spiritual thing, which is in no way a loving and a kind and a gentle thing. Because these actions come from revenge, they come from anger, they come from um, miscommunication, misunderstandings. They come from judgment. So when this person stands in the light, he'll see that he's been judgmental. He'll see that he's been intolerant. He'll see that he's been anything less than loving. He'll see all of these things about himself and he'll see his soul damaged beyond repair. And that's his punishment. Because if you claim to be a godly person and you claim to love your God and you claim to have your faith and then you stand in the light at the end of the day and you have to look at a blackened soul, a darkened soul, a soul that is damaged and destroyed 
almost. I would not be in their shoes. I would not. So I don't think it's God who wields the big axe, who claims his retribution. I think that each one of us, and every one of you I'm talking to, me included, we're all going to have those, ooh, did I really do that? Did I really say that? And some of us are going to have to deal with some of the awful things that we, that we did. And, and, the, and our retribution is to see what our actions cause and the devastation that our actions cause. So none of us is exempt from this. This is standing in the light, which is what we all want to do, has its, its downside in a way. But yet, we stand in the light and we see these things that we did that we should not have done. And we see the damage that we cause, not only to other people, but to our own soul. And we can take that as a complete devastation, or we can say, which I'm keeping my fingers crossed, I'm going to want to do. I'm, I'm going to say, all right, you know what? I did that and it's awful, but what can I do to put it right? What can I do to make it right? And that's what I'm going to strive to do. So I'm going to see this standing in the light as the best lesson, hopefully. And I'm not going to be too hard on myself. And I'm going to hopefully try the best that I can, which I do every day to rectify the hurts. The one hurt that I cannot rectify personally is that I once said something to my father. <clears throat> On some subconscious level, I think I meant to hurt him. No doubt about it. He died before I could actually fully realize what I did. I couldn't take it back. He's not here for me to put my arms around him and say, I'm sorry. I just hope, and I know some of you are in this position. You hope that when I send out my prayers to my dad and I talk to him, and I see him, even as I'm talking to you, I see him standing here looking at me. I know that he loves me, despite what I did, and, and even understands why I did what I did. Nevertheless, a thousand reasons don't make one good excuse, so I have no excuse for hurting him. I just have to make sure that I live my life every day trying not to do that to someone else. Retribution is not ours. We can't go out and murder and kill and hurt in revenge. We can, but it won't do any good. And it'll harm you more than it will hurt those people you're trying to, uh, you know, avenge and, and those people you're trying to take revenge on. It comes down to faith again. Oh boy that little word and it's so hard hold on to your faith and god will lead you in the right way hold on to your faith and your angels will come around you and give you the strength that you need to lift yourself above your hurt and your anger and to eventually find peace should we have the next question yes ma'am Jane from england would like to know how the rosemary altea healing book on face work book works right okay the healing book all right we have a we have a page on facebook uh it's the healing page and uh in fact my uh, friend chris uh oversees that page uh, although i go into it and uh it that page is for anyone who um know if you know of someone who is sick and you want to put them on my prayer list or if you have had uh, a situation yourself or if you are sick yourself you can go in there and put your name down and you then you're on our prayer list it's also a page where people can write in and share their stories and we do get lots of wonderful stories and in fact every sunday we call it our sacred sunday 
stories. Every Sunday we have a sacred Sunday story. And that story might be from one of our healers or it might be from uh, one of our patients or it, anybody can join in. You don't even have to be going through an illness or a sickness to, to join in. But everybody on that page joins together. We have people worldwide who join together for our collective prayer, our healing minute every day, where we send healing not only to our patients, but we send healing to all those people around the world who are suffering and who are in pain. Again, we know that healing works. We know that prayer works. We know that collectively, the more of the, the, there are of us collectively who join together and who do this together, the more of us there are, the more powerful our prayer becomes. So I'm encouraging you all, join our healing page, join our healing minute. And if you need to know any more about that, of course, you can always write to us, Rosemary at rosemarialtea.com simple and easy you can't forget it and that's our uh, email address so if you need to know any more about that or if you you know you still don't understand quite what it's about write to us on our email and we'll do our best to answer you and we now go to the next question <laughs> cecilia w emailed and asks what if you can never work out the purpose to your own life and how do you know? Will you find out? Hi, Cecilia W. Uh, I'm hoping you've joined us. Um, and um, it's a good question. How do you find your purpose? Oh, well, for some of us, the purpose is a huge one. It's a big one. My purpose, for instance, is to talk to all of you, to talk to dead people who I don't believe are dead anymore, um, at all, not anymore, but at all. My purpose is to bring the, the word, word of the spiritual world to as many people who want to listen, as many people who want to be involved. That's my purpose. It's a huge purpose. It's a huge purpose. Many people, uh, entertainers, actors, their purpose, I guess, is to entertain us, to... Uh, to bring us into their world in a way and to share with us their incredible talents. Then we have those people who maybe are a bit aimless. They think, you know, they don't have a purpose, but yet their mothers or fathers, um, their purpose is to give their children the very best that they can give to them. Yeah. To, to smile at someone who is lonely. That's a purpose. It's an important purpose. To, uh, to volunteer. That's an important purpose. I have a, a friend in Canada who volunteers for sick kids all the time. Um, that's her purpose. It doesn't make her famous. Um, it doesn't, you know, doesn't necessarily rock the world. But as I've always said, if you can smile at one person, one small action, one little action, one small word, one small deed can actually change the world, can actually rock the world. To go up to someone who you see is sitting by themselves at a party or a function, they're sitting by themselves and they, they look lonely or they don't know how to be included. And to go over to that person and to say, come and join us. That's happened to me a couple of times. I know you won't believe this, but I've always been very shy. Um, but to go up to someone and say, would you like to join us? Or just to go up to someone and say, hi, how are you doing? That's a purpose. And it might seem like a ridiculous thing, a small thing, but it really isn't. Your purpose can be as simple as giving a smile every day to someone. That can be an incredible and a beautiful purpose and very fulfilling. So, what's this lady's name? Cecilia. Cecilia. So, Cecilia W. 
and uh, all of you who are out there, don't fret too much on what your purpose is. Live your life the best you can. Maybe that's your purpose. Live your life in a, in a good way, in a kind way. Maybe that's your purpose. Every time you say a kind word to someone, every time you smile at someone with love and compassion, <clears throat> every time you do one small thing that makes someone else feel better, your soul soars, grows, beats. The heartbeat of the soul beats louder for that one small action. Maybe your purpose is simply to grow your soul, to bring light and love and joy to your soul. That's a pretty good purpose. So Cecilia, don't, don't get too hung up on, you know, what should I be doing? Just do something every day, something small every day. If you're meant to grow from this, if it's meant to become a, let's say, a bigger purpose, I don't really want to say a bigger purpose, but if it's meant to become bigger and you're meant to do more, when you start to do those small things, the more will come. Because when you start to do those small things, you step onto that path, which is full of goodness and kindness and loving and giving. Now remember, Cecilia, it's not about doing good for others. It's about doing good for you too. So maybe your purpose is to be loving and kind and gentle to you. And maybe that's why you're here on this earth to learn to do that, despite all of your trials and your tribulations, because I know you've had some, despite all of those, if you can be kind to yourself and good to yourself, you can be even more kind to other people. It just flows from you. Once you start to do it, it just flows. So don't worry too much about your purpose. Live your purpose every day. And the next question. <coughs> this is fun. Are you having fun? I'm asking my uh, my lovely Carolyn here. Is she having fun? Are you having fun? Yes, I am. She's, she's actually the one who's had to go through all of the... We've had many, many emails. Go through all the emails. Sort out all of the questions. And, uh, oh boy. And uh, while we're on this, before we go to the next question... You know I love you all, and you know that I really, really, really want your questions. However, some of you have written a whole book. Some of you have written three or four paragraphs to get the one question. So we have to limit it because we simply just don't have time to read through the hundreds of thousands of emails that we get every week. So. If you're going to ask a question, which we love, could you please, please limit the amount of words for your question? And we decided this morning we're going to ask you to limit your questions to 25 words. I know some of you want to share why you want this question answered. I know some of you want to share your stories. And I, I trust me, I would love to hear them. But when we get to six or seven and then 10 and then a thousand and then 2000, it's really tough because we just simply don't have the time. I'm sorry, but we don't have the time. So please, please, please send in your questions. We're going to do this again next week. Send in your questions. I really want them to keep coming in. But if you could limit them to 25 words and uh, then we won't have to read through all this stuff so 25 words and uh, and we'll do our best to answer okay next question let's okay. go for it Pat S would <coughs> like to know if you are able to communicate with animals Pat S yes okay hello Pat S um, wow well that's a good question and uh, that question tells me a little bit about you. It tells me that you haven't read my books. So in my first book, I think it was, in The, in the Eagle and the Rose, I tell a story about uh, how one of my puppies sat at my feet uh, after passing in, in, through an illness. Um, 
I've had quite a few puppies. I, I have to say, I'm going to destroy some of you when I say this, but I'm not a cat person. However, I have to say, when I walk into a house and there are cats around, they make a beeline for me because cats are so smart. And I think they know that I'm not really fond of them. So they try their very best to say, well, too bad for you because we want to come to you anyway. Um, I'm a puppy person, really. And uh, so I've had a few puppies and I've seen every one of them after they've passed. Uh, I've spoken to them, I've played with them. Some of them, one in particular, I was very, very upset about because uh, she, this puppy died in a very, in very difficult circumstances. And uh, I, was, you know, I was feeling a bit guilty, as you do, when you have to make that awful decision. And uh, I woke up in the middle of the night after the day after this had happened, I woke up in the middle of the night and uh, and I leaned, uh, I put my hand down over the bed to stroke the puppy. And, um, you know, I'm stroking and talking. And this is something we did for years and years and years. I'm stroking and talking to this little thing. And all of a sudden, I, I stopped and I realized, wait a minute. He passed yesterday. So I, I sat up and looked down and there was this little creature looking up at me perfectly well, perfectly healthy. He'd come to tell me he's fine. And uh, yes, of course, it is very possible to talk to animals. It's very possible to see animals. There was a great story in The Eagle and the Rose, for all of you animal lovers out there, there's a great story about a, a, a wife, a woman who came to see me, and her husband had died, and she wanted to see if I could connect with him. Well, immediately I see this man. He's tall and he's skinny. I can remember it. This happened years ago, but I can remember it to this day. He's sort of tall and skinny and, uh, you know, and he's sort of, yes here I am and I knew immediately this was her husband except for this one small detail just a little detail under each arm he had a goose yes I did say under each arm this man carried a goose so he's carrying these two geese and I'm thinking to myself how do I tell this lady sitting opposite me that yes He's here, but he's carrying two geese. How, what am I going to say? Because it just seems ridiculous to me, you know, oh my goodness, you know. Why would he be carrying, on his first connection and first communication, why would he be carrying these geese? Well, Grey Eagle said to me, just say it. Just, just tell her, he's, yes, I have this man here and he's carrying a goose under each arm. Just say it. So tentatively, I said, yes, I think I have your husband here, but I do have to tell you this is very strange. He's carrying a goose under each arm. And the woman burst into tears and she said, that's my Alfie, that's my Alfie. And she went on to tell me that these two geese were their very beloved pets who had died after Alfie had died. And Alfie had brought them with him because, of course, he wouldn't go anywhere without them. And the geese wouldn't go anywhere without him, apparently. So, yes, the answer is yes. But I thought you'd enjoy that little story. And let's go to the next question. Okay. Um, Deborah from Italy asks if her husband comes around to visit her and their son. And we have a Sarah from Tennessee wants to know if her mother knows how much she misses her. So we have Deborah from Italy. And Sarah from Tennessee. Tennessee. And Deborah wants to know if her, her husband, husband yeah. is around and uh, well hello Deborah and hello Sarah. <coughs> Excuse me. Before I answer this question, I have to say that we have had hundreds of emails from people saying can you tell me something about my son? Can you tell me something about my husband? Can you, Rosemary, will you give me a message from my whoever, 
your grandmother, and I'd love to do it. But as I've said, we've had hundreds of emails uh, requesting this kind of, of, uh, of thing, as you can see with Deborah and with Sarah. And I would love to be able to give every single one of you who's requested a message from your loved ones, but it's just not possible because we only have so much time. And the time that we're spending here is to try to get, you know, to answer as many questions as we can, but also to give people insights into the workings of the spirit world, insights into the workings of how we can be more spiritual, more aware, uh, how we can hold on to our faith and so on. <coughs> and especially this morning, we needed to spend time talking to those people in Orlando who are suffering so badly. So um, I'm not going to give um, Deborah and Sarah uh, a specific message from their loved ones, but Deborah, you want to know if your husband is around? And the answer is yes, always. Not 24 seven, not 24 hours a day, because there are so many other things that we need to do once we pass into the spirit world. There are lots of other things that we need to do, places we need to explore, people we need to speak to, lots of things to learn. Um, but whenever you need him, or whenever he feels that he needs you, whenever he's inclined to come visit, which I'm sure is often, to, to, to try to give you love and comfort, or if he just wants to share a moment with you, you know? Uh, yes, he'll be around. So now what you need to do, Deborah, if you can, is just to say hi, just to say hello to him. Um, be aware of your feelings. Be aware of, you know, when you might sense something or feel something or feel him or sense him, and I know you do this. I know that you do this. I know this happens. It happens to all of us. And if you become more aware of those moments and you listen and you pay more attention to those moments, when you feel him there, just say hi. Just say hi. I know you're here. I love you very much. And um, my advice would be don't say, can you give me a sign, give me a sign, give me a sign. I've done it myself. I know how it works. We all want that sign. <laughs> I've spent I've spent hours, days, weeks, maybe months in the beginning of before I started working professionally at this. I was always asking, give me a sign, show me, tell me. But while I'm talking about give me a sign, show me, tell me, I'm not listening. I'm not paying attention. I'm just talking, talking, talking. And my energy and my mind are full of what I want. So I've learned over the years you know, don't ask. Listen, pay attention. There's no need for you to ask for signs. They'll give them to you. There's absolutely no need for you to ask. They know what we want. They'll give those signs to us. But if we're too busy asking and pushing and looking in the wrong direction for those signs, we are going to miss them. We're going to not be paying attention when somebody strokes our cheek or someone touches our hair or blows in our ear even because these small things these small signs that they give to us if we're not paying attention if we're not if we're talking too much if we're on the cell phone too much if we're on the computer all the time we're not going to feel those things. We're not going to understand that these are important signs, but we have to give time and energy and attention to listening and feeling and sensing. That's how we will know. So yes, Deborah, I'm sure your husband is around. <coughs> According to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, he's saying a lot. So now you know that he's around a lot, okay? Uh, Sarah, who who does Sarah, her mom? Well, Sarah, um, I'm a mom. When I pass, I'm I'm going to be I'm going to be a pain. I'm going to be a royal nuisance 
I'm going to be with my daughter and with my grandson far more than they probably want me there. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to be an interfering person. So I'm going to be, you know, when I go into that spiritual realm, realm I'm going to be, I'm going to want to interfere. But this is what I, I want to say to all of you. And yes, Sarah, I know your mom is there and I know she loves you. And Grego has put his hand on my shoulder even as I'm saying this to you to confirm that that is so. Um, but, okay, try to remember, all of you, okay, those in the spirit world, they come to us so many times, in so many moments. When I'm in the kitchen, I know this sounds crazy, but when I'm in the kitchen, Grey Eagle comes and interferes. Now, he comes and interferes because I ask him to. Because if I'm cooking something that I don't especially like, or I don't want to eat, but I need to cook this because I'm cooking for somebody else who loves this dish, and I don't especially want to taste it, I'll say to Grey Eagle, is there enough salt in there? Did I put enough seasoning in? Have I cooked this in the right? And he'll say to me, a little bit more salt or another 10 minutes in the oven, you know, he'll give me those indications. He'll tell me <coughs> what it is I need to do. Sometimes he'll just say to me, I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to taste it. <laughs> That's like, so he doesn't always give me the answers. But all of your loved ones who are in the spirit world, if, if your grandmother loved to cook and you go into the kitchen, do you think she's do you think she's not going to be there watching over you, making sure you do it right or trying to inspire you a little bit? So when you're in the kitchen, you know, spare a few minutes and a little bit of thought and time. You know, Grandma, are you there? Should I, am I, should I bake them for five minutes? Be careful when you ask a question of the spirit world. Try and ask a question that has a yes or no answer. So you get a negative or a positive. If you say, should I cook them for 10 minutes or 20 minutes? When I talk to Grey Eagle, I can hear him because we have that communication. And I'm, this is what I do. I'm able to have that communication. But if you don't have that ability and you don't have that communication, it's better to say, should I do it for 10 minutes? You'll get a confirmation. You'll have a feeling. You'll have a sense of yes or you'll have a sense of no. <coughs> If the sense is no, should I cook them for 15 minutes? You might get a yes or a no. Pay attention to your feelings. Pay attention to your senses. You have We have five senses, which if we start to use them on a regular basis, will help to kick in that sixth sense. Because our, all our six senses is our five senses attuned, which make up six senses. We're going to talk more about that in the future. And when we have our webinars, our seminars, and I'm going to be the teacher and teaching you things, we are going to be talking about soul signs and we're going to be talking about our senses and how our five senses are important to us. But for now, just pay attention to your senses, pay attention to the feelings that you have, pay attention and, and try to develop your sensitivity. I'm just, my assistant is trying to say something to me. Would you like to say it? Okay, all right. So, so, so now we're, um, we're talking to Sarah. Yes, she, I'm sure your mom is around and, and Greg is saying, and she's safe. So that's a good thing. But in your daily life, Right. If you go to a football match and your dad, who's passed, used to love to go to football, know that he's by your side. Or if you're watching a TV show that you know they loved, trust me, the amount of times I've had to say to people, look, your dad's been sitting watching so-and-so with you and he's loving every minute of it. They come to you not just in the times that you're in distress. Those in the spirit world come to you to enjoy to participate they're still part of your lives they come to enjoy their grandchildren their children they come to enjoy your sports they come to see you uh win an award or whatever it is they are part of your lives they want to be a part of your lives 
So please, please, please try if you can to include them in your life daily. Do we have another question? We don't have enough time today. We don't. Oh, we don't have enough. Are you sure we don't have one more question? Come on. Okay, Ryan from. <laughs> <laughs> We're pushing it quickly. Ryan from Oregon. Yes. Wants to know what's your favorite type of music? Oh, oh, well, that's that easily. Ryan from Oregon. Uh, well, I sing, actually, and I love all kinds of music I especially like blues jazz uh, I can sing summertime I'm not going to do it today because you know the throat and the voice thing I can sing summertime to blow your socks off I, it's one of my favorite songs but I also like spiritual songs and I like uh, you know I love Christmas carols love 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 Christmas carols so I used to embarrass my daughter when she was little and they had carol service. I would embarrass her because, uh, you know, I'd go in there and sing my heart out and all of Samantha's friends would nudge her and say, oh, we, we know here's your, we know your mum's in the audience here. And, and she would be embarrassed by it. But that's a great question. Thank you, Ryan from Oregon, for asking me a personal question about what I like because... Uh, uh, that's that's very nice of you. So I love all kinds of music. Ryan from Oregon, if you are a musician or if you play, just email us and let us know what your favorite music is. Just a little note also, one of the best ways to communicate with the spirit world is through music. Whether you're singing, whether you're playing, whether you're listening, when you tune in to the vibration of music, you're tuning in to whatever there is that is out there that is beyond our ordinary vision. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your questions. I'm told we only have, what, two minutes left or something? About four. Have four yes. minutes left. Oh, my goodness. Well, in that four minutes, I want to say thank you to all of you who wrote in to me to say get better. I want to thank all of you who sent healing prayers to me. And I especially want to thank people for wishing me a happy birthday, which was three weeks ago. I had an amazing time. My daughter booked us into a hotel for two days, and uh, there was a beach club, and we, oh boy, did we have fun. And uh, so it was just myself, my daughter, and my three-year-old grandson, Reese. Uh, that's what I wanted for my birthday. That's what I got. The weather was perfect. Even though it forecasts major storms here in Florida, Miracle of miracles, the sun shone every day for a week. It was fantastic, and my daughter was thrilled. Please join me again next week. We're going to put it up on Facebook, on Twitter, on yep. Meetup. Uh, we're going to send out emails, let you know what, what day it is, uh, probably on a Thursday again next week. Please join me. Please send in your questions, 25 words and no more. Uh, tough. Uh, and thank you, thank you, thank you. And very quickly, again, our healing prayers go out to all of those who suffered in this dreadful tragedy in Orlando. Uh, blessings to you all. God bless you all. Thank you for joining me.